now and we are live here it is it's wednesday the 16th 16th of it's off again self <laughs> i've been like that all day it's just my tongue and my teeth will not get together i'll try that again hello good <laughs> evening it's wednesday the 16th of october it is just after the hour of nine o'clock and as you can see i'm joined by two lovely ladies tonight over in the far left hand side as you were looking at it we have Laurian C, Carulian, Carulian or Cerulean? I can never remember which. Cerulean, like Caesar. Right, Cer Ceru Cerulean, Cer from Ecke. It's Laurian yep. from Ecke. That's the easiest <laughs> way to put it. It's like, like Susie Purry off the telly. It's Laurian from Ecke. Uh, over on the, how are you doing there, Laurian? You all right? It looks very warm where you are, very glowage. I, I know. It's, it has been quite warm today, but it's not as warm as it looks in my house at the minute. Right, I see, I see. Well, that's fair enough. And if it's been warm where you are? Yeah, all day. It's been sunny. It's been lovely. Clear skies. And we'll be saying goodbye to Lorian in around about <laughs> 10 seconds. <laughs> it's been whipping it down here. We've had... It's coming our way. We're not going to get away with it. But yeah, today I think was our last nice day. Oh, well, I've never been one to wish ill on anybody, but I hope you're right. <laughs> <laughs> in the middle monitor um which is a new monitor much bigger monitor than she's used to um we have the effervescent loveliness the bountiful and bountilicious babe that is the one and only sav how are you doing sav i'm fine Dave. how are you i'm scared <laughs> why are you scared i'm scared because i've got too many buttons to push and i'm not sure which one does what oh just write numbers on them. Oh, they've all got numbers on them. I just can't remember which one does what. He said, switching. You see, if I go back... Now, I know zero gets me to that, so... If the worst comes to the worst, we'll do it like that all night. But it's it's good for me as well, because I can sit and, and actually see everybody in the right place. It's all all good, and I hope it meets with everybody's approval. Um, I should point out that it happened because my wife came into the studio and said something along the lines of, it's a bloody mess in here. And she wasn't far wrong. So we've, we've had a bit swap about. And with some help from Chris, Kat, uh, everything's levelled up and it's, and it's there. But just to break me in gently, two Skype calls tonight. There will be a third where you see the Smoke Without Fire logo. Um, that can also be done. So it's all good. Um, I suppose I ought to play the titles and tell them what the show's called, aren't I, really? Probably, yes. Would that be a good idea, do you think? I think so, yeah. We'll do that. This is uh, the one and only show that is actually called VT Talk. There we go. I knew I'd forget to press something and I did, but never mind. Um, it's been a queer old week this last week, hasn't it? Mm. Talking e-cigs and stuff like that. But I wanted to start the night with something that isn't actually e-cig. Um, and it, 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 this was actually in the Daily Star on Sunday. Do, you, do either of you get the Daily Star on Sunday? Mm, no. no. It's, I know it's a bit of a lad's mag, but you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> Well, it, it, it came up in the Daily Star on Sunday, which I shall, I shall now proceed to put on screen. There it goes. And it says, A 111-year-old secret to a long life. 20 fags a day and a pint of sherry for breakfast. <laughs> Dorothy Peel celebrated her 111th birthday yesterday and says her longevity is down to booze, cigs, and never having had children. And I'm cutting straight back to me and going... I get the last bit. Anyway, yes, there she is, 111. That was taken on 100th and 11th. 100th and 11th? 100, oh, for God's sake, David. 111. I mean, look at her. You wouldn't put her over 80. No. Nah. 
I, I would not put her a day over 80, I'm telling you. It says here, Widow Dorothy has enjoyed a tipple for years and has smoked for most of her life. This is really funny. She said, I drank regularly throughout the day. In the morning, I had half a pint of sherry for lunch a gin and tonic and around seven o'clock a small ginger ale with a bit of whiskey. These days, I just have a sherry now and then. I decided to pack in smoking when I was 103 because <laughs> I got bronchitis and the doctor warned me my life was in danger. I used to smoke 20 a day, but not anymore. I've been tempted to have the odd cig at Christmas or New Year along with pink champagne, which is my favourite drink of all time. I love this woman. <laughs> so much for smoking and drinking isn't good for you. I'm living proof that little of what you fancy does you good. I'm sorry, if Jeremy Means watching this, he'd be throwing up all over the place. <laughs> As will most of Cancer Research UK, Nash. I think not having had kids has helped. That's probably how she could afford the fags and the booze. <laughs> That's probably why I look and feel so good. She's from Bridlington in East Yorkshire. Uh, look, that, I've put her back on screen. Look at that. What a fine woman. 111. Honestly, seriously. I wet myself laughing when I read that. What... Laurian, what do you what do you have you you did, have you seen that? Haven't seen it no, um, and yeah, I have to say I'm probably going to put most of that down to not having kids. <laughs> I mean, the the whole smoking drinking thing is awesome, but yeah, in my experience, I think definitely the kids has an impact. You do. Oh yeah. Well, yes, I suppose you could be right. Late nights, early mornings, but then I suppose if she's been smoking twenty a day and soup and a bottle of sherry a day. You should have been relaxed about it. She's doing fine at the end of the day. I, I love little stories like that because they pop up all over the place. You hear of people living to ridiculous ages, having smoked and drinked and done all the things that we're told not to do, and they're still fine. It's brilliant. Well, absolutely right. Absolutely right. And and like a fool, I forgot to switch to you. On, but never mind, don't mind. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm learning a new system here. What can I tell you? Um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the whole the whole notion, I love the idea that she got to 103 smoking 20 a day and then she got a dose of bronchitis and the doctor said it, if she didn't pack in smoking, it would kill her. I mean, <laughs> having got that far, would you worry? Sav, <laughs> has Chat got anything to say on this, Sav? <laughs> Chat tend to agree with Lorian that it's the children part that's kept her alive that long. And Mark Shaw has said she's either 111 or too drunk to remember how old she is after the sherry. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think she'll have been getting telegrams from the Queen every year for the last 11 years. And I think it's probably safe to say as well that her age is exactly what it says on the tin because they can check these things these days, can't they? <laughs> yes. um, but it does, it, it, it made me think a little bit, did that, when I saw it. So I went and did some checking out. And you know all these um, uh, world record holders for, for um, world oldest man and world's oldest woman. I haven't found one that's been in the Guinness Book of Records for the last 30 years that I've been able to check. They all smoked. <clears throat> Makes you think, doesn't it? And, and you know, when, when asked, what do you put your longevity down to? Mahafalt Nehushnish, 123 of out of Mongolia or wherever it was said 30 fags a day um, half an elephant a week and you know the contents of a virgin's bowel twice on, on <laughs> you know what I mean um, mm. but yeah they all apparently have smoked and I'm sure that's gonna really really annoy some of the uh, anti-smoking campaigners you have yeah. sorry Lorian go on no, I was going to say, it's quite funny because when you look at the southwest and Cornwall and Devon, we've always had a higher than average smoking rate, but we also have um, our average death age is much higher than most other places as well, despite having the high smoking rate at the same time. Well, I'm not advocating smoking, but it's always it has always interested me that. I have to say, it's something that, 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 that I have wondered about for a donkey's age because, and I don't know whether we spoke about this before, you two young things being as young as you are, were born, what, 60s, 70s? 70s, yeah. Yes, you see, gentlemen, that's how you do it. 
you, you don't say how old are you you say you were born 70s 80s 60s and you, just to get the ballpark i was born in 1955 and i've got no problem admitting to it at all when i was born the smoking prevalence was around about 80 percent in this country and yet all of the predictions are that my generation will be the longest lived generation yet um and yet i was exposed to secondhand smoke left right and center right the way through all my formative years i'd start i had my first fag when i was eight i'd started smoking properly when i was 11 on 20 a day by the time i was 12 and i'm still walking about and breathing if you look at keith who comes in here i mean th there is a question for yourself how old do you think keith is oh i don't know 60s fine it down early 60s go on then i'm not going to give you that because you're completely wrong damn he's 74 is he yes wow and he was brought up like me uh, in in smoking prevalence of over 80 percent everywhere you went there was cigarette smoke and look at him running around mm. like a spring chicken his wife vicky is 71 mm -hmm. i should have said younger than him but not by much sorry ladies <laughs> Thankfully, she'll not hear, otherwise I'll be hobbling tomorrow night. Um, she's 71, and exactly the same thing. Walking about and breathing absolutely perfectly. My granddad smoked all his life, was 93 when he went. My grandma was 92 when she went. Smoked all her life and was around smoke all her life. My granddad was a, a pitman. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was just, just when I looked at that, I started thinking a little bit. And it seems that all of the really old, old timers smoked and you you seem to be confirming that Lorian. yeah no i, th I think that's uh, yeah you're right it's the your age group is the one who's proposed to live the longest and at the end of the day when you look at the what people can die of apparently no one dies of a natural death anymore we all die of something and that that isn't the case it's all statistics and figures and they all cancel each other out in the end to a degree and yeah uh, what will be will be and I think it's best to take everything with a pinch of salt, really. Well, absolutely right. And, and I did see uh, a quote from somebody, and I can't remember who the hell it was, but they were in the, in the medical persuasion, if you like, who said, uh, life is not about arriving at your grave neat and tidy and in perfect health, because you're dead. It's about doing a handbrake turn up alongside and rolling in absolutely <laughs> knackered. Well, it reminds me of a quote that I read again, and it was, I entered this world kicking and screaming and covered in blood, and I intend to go out the same way. Same way. Well, absolutely. I mean, I've, I've, I've said for many, many years that I, I want to die peacefully in my sleep, like my granddad did, not kicking and screaming like the passengers on his bus when he went. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> too soon oh well the mind <laughs> but <laughs> it kind of it leads me neatly in to, to what we were going to be doing a little bit of talking about today because if Lorian, sav and myself we're, we're tw twitter right twitter read twit what the hell are we help me twitter is that the word uh oh get her no, I've, somebody, I've seen somebody else say it. That's the first time I've ever actually said, or, or I've never even typed that word. <laughs> Twitterati. Okay. So. We tweet a lot and read a lot of tweeting. And today it, it is actually no different from any other day. And I was taken by two or three things on the Twitter that came from people who you would have thought ought to know better because they're supposedly educated uh clever degrees phds all of that kind of stuff you would have thought they were quite clever and you would have thought they would have known better for instance to publish a defamatory comment about eka uk just for argument's sake because what happened was it, i don't know whether you know about bath tr where it's tobacco tactics they had decided that they should be trying to out all of the the, the tactics that tobacco companies use to, as they see it, get their own way and peddle death. Yeah. Um, so they had come up with this strange notion on their page that's all about tobacco company lobbyists 
and front groups that ECHA UK was a front group and lobbying group for Big Tobacco. I will now hand you across to Laurie and see from ECHA who will tell you the rest of the story. <laughs> mm. <coughs> I think my delight probably hasn't gone unnoticed at this and to be honest it was one of those awful moments I was having a conversation with somebody else <coughs> about e stuff and it got dropped into the chat that this had just been tweeted and you have that moment of going I don't understand are you talking about Eka and then I read the tweet and then read through uh, back to the page and read through the page and uh, my actual reaction was first I felt sick and then I burst into tears because it's it's one of those moments where we just think this is what they're prepared to do um, is to go to these extremes to completely discredit us and make us so dirty that nobody wants to touch us or listen to us. However, after I calmed down, went to watch my son play rugby, um, we composed an email today and fired it off to them and very quickly got an email back, a very reasonable email, assuming that they'd made an error, not throwing accusations around. Mm -hmm. um, and oh yeah, been about half an hour, I got an email back, and they've taken it off. Um, and now we need to talk to them about the fact that they need to apologize. Because we everything we've done for the last 10 months, is, we didn't know that banner has been above our heads. And um, we've got to now work out how to make them apologize publicly. For doing it in, in in yes i would say in uh, in absolutely the most obvious way possible because the minute i mm. saw it i tweeted them straight back and said uh what <clears throat> no 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 i just wonder exactly how actionable and how defamatory that is because i mm. i mean w one of the reasons that I, I, I wanted to bring this up tonight amongst other things is because it would appear that the ants are having a bit of a failed day at the minute they do they're trying all kinds of stuff on are they not have you have you seen this you noticed it sav yes i have and it's it's just it's wrong on all kinds of levels and i'm yeah, sure uh, chat's got something to say i'm sure well matt anderson has just typed in this second keyboard warriors and regarding the echo thing mark shaw was saying yes they need to tweet and publish an apology well, ab absolutely right. Absolutely right. They, they, need, they need to be doing that. They absolutely certainly need to be doing that. Um, and there was another bit of a happenstance that occurred during the course of today as well, which I want to go to. But I do want to kind of stress this whole notion that the ants are on the warpath. The reason they're on the warpath, I think, is because they're scared. They are absolutely wetting themselves because... Last week, vapors in the UK made history. You lot made history. It is the first time since the formation of the EU and probably any governments prior to that that public opinion and public activism has had such a profound effect on any piece of proposed legislation. It only happened because you got out there and did what you did. Tweeting, emailing, seeing MEPs, all of the actions that everybody took. The only reason it occurred was because there were thousands and thousands and thousands of pieces of evidence from people like you that made that change. And what is worrying the anti e crowd, pardon me, we do need to find, <laughs> how could I, you know, I was going to be sick to my stomach there. We, we, do, we do have to find a new term for the anti e crowd. And I've been looking at a few acronyms, but I keep on coming up with the same one and I can't use it on here, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, yes, let's just say that Jeremy Hunt's close. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've got to stop. Would that be Jeremy Hunt, you just said? Yes, with an H. Yes. It's close. Just, the, the, just check. Yeah, the acronym I came up with was very close to that, but let's not go there. Um, no, yeah, so they are scared. They are absolutely scared. Otherwise, they wouldn't be doing these stupid tricks. And we've noticed that when they get called out on it, they back straight down. And after we come back from the adverts, we've got another little tale to tell, similar to that, and these are going to keep on coming. We said it was going to be a dirty fight, and I don't think we were wrong. We'll take the ads back in two minutes, and you'll love this one. See you in two.
Weber and iWeber Alexa. Best in Yorkshire for your basic needs. That's iWeber.co.uk and iWeber-Alexa.co.uk. iWeber and iWeber-Alexa.co.uk. Proud sponsors of WeberTrails.tv. And we are back in the room. Welcome back to VT Talk here on the 16th of October, Wednesday night, as ever is, with Carulian C. Lorian from Ecker. I'm going to just call it Lorian from Ecker. I'm, it's just, I'm having trouble with pronunciation tonight. Me, me, me vowels are not as they should be. And in the middle, Sav, as per usual. I'll not give you all the titles you usually get, Sav, because I know it just no. makes you laugh, doesn't it? It does, yes. <laughs> The bountiful and bountilicious beard that you yes, are. Yes, yes, yes. Blah, blah, blah. The effervescent loveliness. It's amazing, <laughs> isn't it? Not, I'm, I'm going to talk about an outfit that's not effervescent or lovely in, in any degree. Um, but I'm going to talk about somebody. And in fact, if I, if I whip across to this Twitter page, you will see the name at the top there. Scully. Gabriel Scully. No idea who he is. But um, yes, a tobacco control BMJ, F. Godley, Trish Ed, delighted with BMJ, moved to ban tobacco funded research. I argued for this in 1996. And then he's put a picture up, a selfie, I think. Um, and Simon Chapman will ban, include e cig industry research, especially that same companies now moving in. Trish Groves, who I assume has something to do with the BMJ, said, Same, yes, if tobacco funded, interesting thought, and then Orion Vapes, who's one of us, has said, what if the AC company is not owned by a tobacco company? To which Trish Grove says, definition of tobacco industry funding, and I happen to have the link for that there, which we can go to. However... Um, I took it upon myself to be a little bit of a stirrer, you know what I'm like, and I tweeted back at the BMJ and asked the question outright, does that mean that any research sponsored by an e only company would be banned? And the reply that came back was, yes, it will, because e-cigs are tobacco. So then... <coughs> There was another little set of tweetage went on um, and I said, well, how does that then apply to McNeil, who have got an e-cig on the stocks and they are currently doing the various different trials that they've got to do in order to get a marketing authorization. Does that mean that their e-cig research wouldn't be allowed? And there was silence for a great length of time, during which a lot of, of Twitterati, I, I like that word, Twitterati, we're going to use that a lot. A lot of Twitterati got in on the, on, the, on the action because by some accident I'd managed to retweet the reply I got. Um, and they were asking questions as well. And then, oh, can you remember what time it was when we got the reply? Oh, I'm thinking about five-ish. Was something like that, I think, yeah. It was a long while later anyway. And somebody came back with the sheepish reply of, um, no, no, there'll be a podcast later in the week where our editor will, will explain everything. Um, the previous tweet was an error. Uh, what did it sound like to you, Lorian? It sounded like somebody somewhere took it upon themselves to speak for the BM, BMJ and then got called on it and got... Um, we don't swear, do we? So let's say a telling off um, and then probably a little meeting and what do we do now? Yes, that, that's, exactly, that's exactly my feeling. My feeling is we were on the ball enough to catch them and say, Oi, hang on a minute, what about McNeil? They produce e-cigs, you're going to stop their research as well? At which point I think somebody's going, oh, bloody hell, hang on. Um, oh, uh, um... We didn't think Big Pharma were going to get into it. That was the way I read it. 
I think they didn't think that the big pharmacy companies were going to be getting into ECs. I think they thought it was all going to be tobacco companies. And that tells you something. Sav, I can see your eyes are doing 90 to the dozen and I can hear clittery clattery. Yeah, my keyboard's <laughs> been very noisy today. There's a lot of stuff um, going through chat. Um, Leanna Lawler's probably phrased it best in. So does, if that includes ECs, should, should big pharma's research also be banned? Um, yes. which Ed West also said uh, can they keep big pharma money out of it too very boring has said Trish Groves this is the editor in chief of BMG Open and uh, Matt Anderson says I love it when people flap their gums about things they know nothing about well that would be that's exactly right isn't it they, they, they do know nothing about this but I do think um, yeah this whole question of what you're going to do about McNeil and a big pharmaceutical company getting involved in e-cigs and all of a sudden there's some backpedalling going on. Um, but this is another example of how the anti-e-cig movement are, it seems to me, jigging the market to suit themselves and making the rules up as they go along. We've heard, for instance, that uh, Martin Dockrell of Ash has been down into the London Youth Anti-Smoking Project, I forget what it's called now, delivering lectures, you know, like seminars on ASICs. Now, be before anybody goes up in arms and anything, Martin Dockrell at Ash is a big, 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 big supporter of ASICs. He thinks they're fabulous. He actually does think they're fabulous. He just doesn't trust the market. To get things right and thinks that the only way is Essex is meds um, that, that, that you know that's the only way we can be absolutely certain that they'll be absolutely safe or safe enough and stuff like that in, in, in every respect Martin Dockrell and me myself we're singing from the same hymn sheet until we get to the regs when we get to the regs that's the only place in which we differ he's a really big supporter so he's been out there delivering it's a nasty cough. Don't worry about it. It's not the cough that carries you off. It's the coughing that carry you off, and you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. What? Nothing. <clears throat> right, I'm going to jump in there, so I've got a couple of things that have just come through from chat. Go on. Um, Andy D said, question. question. As they're saying tobacco, does that not drop the hint that plan A, the meds regs plan, is a fail? So plan B is put things in tobacco regulation and plan B is now a go. Well, this is what's been going through my mind. And, and as we get towards the end of the show, I'm going to be recommending everybody goes and reads Clive Bates's blog from the day because it tells you everything you need to know. And he's got it right. But yes, it does to me look as though the powers that or the powers that would like to think they be have realised that, hang on a minute, the European Parliament has actually agreed on this and they're quite a heady bunch, you know, and they seem pretty firm on it because the majority was huge in parliamentary terms. Um, certainly, I, I can say for a certain fact that the UK government, the, the, the coalition, would love to have a majority like that. Any single party in the UK would love to have a majority of the size that Amendment 170 got. This was not a 51 to 50. This was much, much bigger than that. It was, what was it, 60, 40? <coughs> Something as big. It's what's called a qualified majority, as in no argument, that's it, done with. And yes, I do think a lot of these organisations are going, oh, they've, they've done that and oh, I cannot see it getting through. It looks as though it's going to be tobacco. All right, how do we go about demonising e-cigs now? And this is what's going to be happening. We've, we've definitely be got, got to be on the ball. You, you said there were a couple more, Sav? Yeah, um, Alan Fletcher and Dream Vapor brought up this. Um, so you don't, so they don't want the long-term research that the BMG have been calling for, is what Alan Fletcher says. And Dream Vapor says, does that now mean that they will be ignoring all the data used by the MHRA that has been taken from the tobacco research over the years? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, it's just before you go on, that is such a can of worms, isn't it? Yes. I mean... Yes, as, as has been rightly pointed out, some of the basis of the MHRA's case is from evidence provided by BAT, and not just BAT, 
but it was tobacco funded research does that mean that's got to all be ignored because the bmj says so they've opened a can of worms they cannot control here go on sav yeah, and the, the final comment has come from uh, Audrey Kershaw, and it's uh, and he says, it's broader than anti-ASIG, it's anti-nicotine prohibitionism. Oh, anti-nicotine prohibitionism and puritanism, I'm here to tell you. I mean, it, it you know, when you see the backpedalling like this going on, trying to find any straw possible to grasp at, um, it 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 it, pff, it makes my head explode almost that they they are bringing in the last possible arguments they've got. Our job as vapors, as people who don't want to see e-cigs getting blasted to bits and got rid of, our job is to handle the objections. That's that's the term I'm going to use. We've got to handle the objections. And it's a bit like a sales technique. When somebody comes and says, ah, yes, but if they put out all that smoke, you can go, ah, uh -uh, sorry, no, look, liquid. It's liquid in here. And what you see coming out is vapour. Because what we've got inside is just a little kettle. There's one objection. Handled. And then you get, but it looks like you're smoking a cigarette. Excuse me. That looks nothing like a number six or an embassy regal. Show me a cigarette that looks like that. And I'll show you a Star Wars fan. You know, we handle the objections. We've got to keep doing that. But they're coming up with dafter and dafter objections. And if the BMJ, and it looks as though it was trying to, lump e-cigs in with big tobacco, that's an objection that's easily handled. And it got handled during the course of the day. I couldn't believe that the retraction came in quite as quickly as it did. Is there any more from chat, Sav? You've just about covered the final thing I've got, which was a question that came in from Oldgate. He says, Dave, I was chatting with a lady today in the local supermarket. She desperately wants to give e-cigs a try, but is worried about all the negative stuff that's been spouted by the media and the likes of uh, Linda McAvan. And she's frightened that she's going to be wasting her money if a ban is going to come in. What would you advise Bob to say to her about e-cigs to try and reassure her? Um, right. It, 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 this is this is dead simple and it actually is dead simple and it all works in our favor anyway if this all goes through by christmas with e-cigs in there under amendment 170 and that's not what i'm hoping is going to happen because but we'll talk about that later but let's say that the status quo applies when it goes through it will be signed off in 2014 and there's a three year period for medregs to actually take effect and that's in there it can't be messed about with it's in there that means there's a three year period and more from now for people to take e-cigs up no matter what form of e-cigs it is that they feel they want to take up they can actually do exactly that not just all went to hell in a handcart as well there you go that's better and um, so by the time we get to 2017 my feeling is if the if the, the rate of growth is as it has been over the last four years we're going to see in the region of four to five million e-cig users in the uk and that i think is going to make it very difficult for any med regs to be applied it's just not going to happen because by then as well all the court cases that are going to happen will have happened so what i would say bob and to anybody who's got somebody that's in this predicament is look there's three years give them a go if the worst comes to the worst what's going to happen you'll be back where you were in three years time but and this is a big but there's a hell of a saving to be made in the meanwhile you i mean without over gilding the lily as so many vendors are guilty of doing i reckon you can safely say that you can save 50 percent on your cigarette costs if you use off the shelf ones it's not the same if you're on rollies but if you if you today are buying off the shelf fags marley's whatever and you go to e-cigs it's going to cost you half of what it costs to smoke over three years that's a nice christmas box for the grand bands or the bands or whatever 
it, it's a fair amount of money, even if in three years' time you do get forced back onto the fags. So for somebody looking to start today or to switch today to substitute today, do it. Just do it. And and the money savings worth it alone. And by the time we get to that fateful day, things will be sorted out. Because I, for one, am not going to start fighting. There's a blonde over there I can guarantee he's not going to stop fighting. And there's a, bru there's a brunette, redhead, blonde, whatever colour she fancies being today. And you do. I know. She's not going to stop fighting. And I can tell you, none of us, on the, we're not, we're not going to stop. They'll stop me fighting when they nail the bloody lid down. That's how quick that's going to happen. And I'll get up Simon Chapman's nose. I'll get up Martin McKay's nose. I'll get up anybody's nose that wants to take these things away from us. Because they shouldn't be allowed to. They just shouldn't. I'll shut up. Laurian, your advice? I, I, do you know, I've, I'm lucky I haven't had the people saying negative stuff to me. Um, and because of where I work, I get a lot of random people come up and ask what in God's name I'm doing. But a lot of the time, I thought I find the most effective thing is to say, do you know what? I smoked for 23 years. I smoked through two pregnancies. That's how hopeless I was. This isn't safe, but it's safer. And those little bits of honesty um, is what makes people realise that there is something in it. And, you know, they can be persuaded away from all the scary stuff that was being spouted. We just need to be honest with them about why we're doing it and what the smoker that we were was. And people, they understand that. They can connect with that. Yes, yes, absolutely right. And I will say, in defence of Martin Dockrell, his advice has always been the same and it hasn't changed. And any time he's talking away, he'll tell anybody, e-cigs are orders of magnitude safer than smoked tobacco. I like I say, exactly the same hymn sheet as where we're at, exactly the same stuff you've heard me spout God knows how many times, just until we get to the regs. It's only when we get to the regs that we differ. So in that respect, you know, I mean, he would he would take Stanton Glance on as soon as look at him. Because he knows Stanton Glance is an idiot. He hasn't said as much, but he nodded when I did. Didn't he, Sav? Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> Has that helped Bob, do you think? Yes, Bob said thank you very, very much for that, and he will pass it on. No problem. Anything um, more from there? Two more things. Very boring, as... Um, he says, my reply to the BMG was favourited quite a bit today and the reply that he put on Twitter was, Discount discounting scientific work based on sources is the first step in the destruction of true science. Mm -hmm. And Forbega was said, it's often claimed that a big farmer is interested in getting ASICs away because of competition with NRT. However, their biggest threat is the competition with medicines they sell to cure lung diseases, etc. A lot more money is made from that. Oh, yes. Um, the fact of the matter is, NRT represents very little in, in terms of the percentage of turnover of big pharmaceuticals. A very, very small percentage. Vanishingly small, in fact. Uh, I think the market is worth less than a billion throughout the whole of Europe. But the market for anti-cancer drugs and uh, COPD treatments and stuff like that dwarfs it. It's 10 or 12 billion. It's massive. It's absolutely huge. Um, in fact, I was, I was reading, and thank you, Glennis Wilmot, for putting this out, 152 billion euros spent on cancer treatments in Europe annually. 152 billion, of which around about half is the drugs. I make that about 75 billion, don't you? Don't think yeah. I'm wrong there. So yeah. a billion on NRT, they're not that bothered. It's the ongoing stuff they're bothered about. And as we know, and as we're about to cover, Dr. Farsalinos has just told us that it's not going to contribute to heart disease. And that's going to come up in the third half, right after these uh, messages from our sponsors. We'll be back in two minutes.
And we are back in the room. <laughs> Guess who was listening to the adverts? <laughs> Regarding the adverts, I just have to say I'm bitterly disappointed our chat typing during the adverts, but that's another story. Do they? They do. They type during the adverts. It's terrible. Oh, I think that's shocking. I know, and I mean, people were telling them no typing during the adverts, but... You you would never hear us talking through the adverts no on Team Talk. No, silence. I mean, I know we don't on here. That's only because I haven't built it in yet but i can but, but we still sit respectfully quiet we do we do we do we do we sit respectfully and we look at the adverts and we go oh yeah mm, yeah good 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 <laughs> we did don't, don't well laurie didn't because she couldn't see them could you no, no no but never mind hey let's shall we do some good stuff i like the good stuff you know how everybody keeps well not everybody but the 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 we've got to find a term for them the anti-nicotine zealots and that'll do the anti-nicotine tobacco zealots, the ones that don't like a keep on whizzing on saying, we don't know what's in e-liquid. No, that's not Stanton Glance, is it? I'll do, I'll, I'll, I'll do, I'll do Stanton Glance. Here we go. Well, I can tell you we don't know what's in that e-liquid, boy. Could be anything. Sweaty socks, don't like them e They're not nice. Well, we do. We do, we do. Dr. Farsalinos has been uh, doing his thing with his team. And I should put on screen what he has been doing. It's very small writing and there's an awful lot of it. And we're going to pray say it for you and make it dead easy to understand. Basically, what they've been doing is a comparison of the cytotoxic potential of cigarette smoke and electronic cigarette vapour extract on cultured myocardial cells. Those are heart cells. So they've taken some heart cells from somewhere, they've cultured them, and they've, they've then put cigarette smoke extract, electronic cigarette vapour extract on them to see what the crack is. Now, the whole thing is on free, so you can get a, a look at it should you so desire, and I'm sure there'll be a link somewhere. But let's just run through the abstract because that actually tells you what it's all about. And it says, electronic cigarettes have been marketed as an alternative to smoking habit tick that's good besides chemical studies of the content of ec liquids or vapor little research has been conducted on their in vitro effects in other words what happens on living cells in glass culture dishes smoking is an important risk factor for cardiovascular disease and cigarette smoke has a well-established cytotoxic effects on myocardial cells this is where the antis keep getting this thing smoke and will make you have heart attacks some overestimate the case, not mentioning Stanton Glance, bloody idiot that he is. Mm -hmm. The purpose of this study was to evaluate the cytotoxic potential of the vapour of 20 different electronic cigarette liquid samples and, use, and, and a base liquid sam sample, which was 50% glycerol and 50% propylene glycol, with no nicotine or flavourings, on cultured myocardial cells. Included were four samples produced by using cured tobacco leaves in order to extract the tobacco flavour. I'm not going to go through all the methods and everything else. I'm just going to jump straight to the results. Cigarette smoke extract from three tobacco cigarettes was produced according to method two. And viability was measured after 24 hours incubation according to ISO 10993-5. A viability of less than 70% was considered cytotoxic because some will just die anyway. So the results are as follows. Cigarette smoke extra extract was cytotoxic at extract concentrations greater than 6.25%. That means at less than 6.25% they weren't. And it's important to remember that one because that basically says that second-hand smoke isn't cytotoxic. Just thought I'd drop that one in there. The three electronic cigarette extracts produced by tobacco leaves were cytotoxic at 100% and 50%, but nothing lower than that. And one, cinnamon cookies, was cytotoxic at 100% concentration only. The viability of that one, though, was just below the allowable range, so it nearly wasn't. Inhibitory viability was reduced, but no sample was cytotoxic according to ISO 10993-5 definition. 
Vapor produced by the base liquid was not cytotoxic at any extract concentration and cell survival was not associated with nicotine concentration of EC liquids. So the study indicates that some electronic cigarette samples have cytotoxic properties on cultured, cultured cardiomyoblasts associated with the production process and materials used in flavourings. However, all electronic cigarette vapour extracts were significantly less cytotoxic compared to cigarette smoke extracts. And that's a lot of words, a lot of big words. Summing it up dead simply, what it basically says, what it means is anything that doesn't have tobacco leaves, WTA, that kind of stuff in there, or cinnamon, has no cytotoxic effect. Certainly of the 20 he tried. And I think this is amazingly good news because the only area of doubt that I've ever had in my mind about e-cig liquids, about e-liquids, is the flavourings. As in, what's in the flavourings? Because I know PJ does you no harm. I know VJ does you no harm. I know nicotine does you no harm at the concentrations we use. The only real unknown has been flavourings and this is telling us that of all of the ones that were tested and the, and the list is, is interesting, none of them are cytotoxic. They're, in fact, it's out of the ordinary for an e juice to be cytotoxic to cultured myocardial cells. Now then, I'm going to throw this straight at you, Laurie, and you knew I would because that's why you're here. What do you make of that? Do you find that to be um, uh, a positive and optimistic thing? There's no question. That's a massively positive thing. Whether or not anybody will pay any attention to it is another matter. But the fact is, it's something um, really good for us to throw around. And really interesting that it was only the steeped tobacco leaves and the cinnamon um, which potentially had any any complications. But the other ones, the other flavours were fine. Because like you say, that's been the, the big sticking point. Um, and another nice thing off of this is a friend of mine is currently doing research on exactly what Vasalinos has just done. Um, and so now I can pass that to her and she can use that to kind of take it a step further. So it's, there's lots of nice little things actually to come out of this. It's really good news. It is. It's absolutely fabulous. Sav, what's chat saying on it? Chat, I've got quite a lot to say, but before I go to chat, I must say, that was the very first thing I read this morning. And it took a while for my brain to sort of get into gear. But what, when I was reading it, I thought, this is brilliant stuff. Finally, I can now, as an adult make an informed choice. If I want to vape cinnamon, I now know this is the case. I can make that informed choice to do it. The same yeah. with the whole tobacco alloyed stuff. And it is brilliant to have that information. I, I've, I've got to say, before you carry on, I've got to, I, I, I think this is a bombshell. I think this is an absolute bombshell. Because all of the nuggets, like Glantz and... and, and I'm not going to mention McKay's name. All of the nuggets that keep on coming up and saying we don't know what's in, in the vapour off e cigs we can stick two fingers up at them and point them at this and say, we do, and we know exactly what damage it causes. Most of the time, bugger all. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it. Sorry, Sav, back to you. No problem. Uh, Mick Wright has said, Farsalinas is addressing this today. He puts it down to a lack of research and flavouring. And I make, as I make e-liquids, I agree. We do need guidelines for specific flavours for e -cig, for the e-cig market so we know that things are, are 100% safe or as safe as they can be. Yeah. Uh, Matt Anderson said, this is all true, <coughs> we should look at flavourings more, but people also have to remember that you're not breathing in the 100% concentration. And Formiga was saying, now Dave, is that a known unknown or is that an unknown known, to quote the <laughs> WHO? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> It's a clever man that knows what he doesn't know. I've got to be honest. I've got to be honest. I follow the science behind this a lot um, because my, for what it's worth, 40 years ago when I was at, at, at uni, I was on a science-based course. I was actually a marine biologist. I've never actually used the qualifications at all. I did, no, because I was, <sighs> just so everybody knows, I was studying fecal coliforms in the North Sea, off Scarborough, as it happens, because there was a sewage outlet. So I, I know a little bit about this, and I know a bit about toxicology and, and that kind of stuff. And when I read through that, I was thinking, good Lord above, here you have a situation where 
the extract that they pulled done the way it's supposed to be done in every laboratory throughout the world in order to be uh, a decent study 6.25 percent concentration of the cigarette smoke cytotoxic the lowest concentration that's cytotoxic in any of the e-juices was 50 percent that's an order of magnitude higher a full order of magnitude higher which means that in in absolute terms even at the very very worst e-cigs as far as the heart is concerned are 10 times safer or one tenth the risk of smoking tobacco that's exactly what that says one tenth the risk so if you were a 20 a day smoker you would need to consume the equivalent of 200 fags a day in the amount of vapor you took in you'd need to take 10 times the drugs in order to get the same cytotoxic effect the same toxicity on your heart that is a massive chunk and that's at the very very worst at the best there's no harm at all none and it doesn't need med regs to tell anybody that Lorian I know you you've not read it I know what you were like and I know you read through this stuff first word to last word and then you go back and read all the words in between dozens of times and I know you haven't with that one how are you feeling well I read I read um, very briefly before we came, I came on to you I, I, I found a si quick simplified version of it um, so had, yeah kind of had the basis of what it was it, it is it's it, there's just nothing bad to say about it there just isn't it's 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 really good news and I hope it gets picked up because there's no reason for it not to well exactly exactly right exactly right um, press the wrong button press the right button David I told you I've got two pad never mind it's working um, yeah, I, I think it's 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 amazing news and uh, and kudos uh, to Dr. Farsalinos for coming up with that. It's something that I hope will be spread far and wide. Um, it might not suit people who are still using tobacco. Well, sometimes the facts work against you, and I think I've made it perfectly plain. I want people to have the choice to do whatever they want. I really do. Um, but before we disappear, I'm going to. Uh, let you into a little bit of a secret. There's a new SWAT video coming out, isn't there, Sav? Yes. We can't really tell you anything about it. Well, we can. No, no we can't. Well, can we? No, we can't. Shall no. Oh, sorry. I've done a trailer. There you go. It's coming up. It's not going to be long, and it's going to be, but it's going to be long. It's not going to be long in terms of how long it'll be before it comes out, but it's going to be long in terms of how long it is when. Saf, tell them. It won't be long until it's released, but the length of the video may be quite a bit longer than that. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> when in doubt, get a woman to do it. They know what they're talking about. <laughs> Oh Lord, um, we've got we've got about three minutes left, um, and I just want to one more time exhort everybody, if they will, please go to clivebates.com and read his latest blog. On it, he has everything you need to know about what's happening in Europe, and it's important that we do what needs to be done as individuals in order to make a difference the way we made a difference last week. And we did and you can do it and will you please will you please read clive bates's blog clivebates.com the latest one and it'll give you all the hints and kinks you need to know in order to be able to write to your mp 
visit your MP, anything you need to do in order to get your MP to take notice and get to happen what we want to happen. And what we want to happen is the third way. That's what we're looking at. We've, we've safeguarded ACIGs for the time being. We know we've got the ants on the run because of what's been happening with Eka and Lorian from Eka and what's been happening with the BMJ and how we made them. We, pardon me, I'm so full of wind tonight. <laughs> Retract. It's the side. I'll blame you, Sav. Fair enough. <laughs> it's, it's the nerves. I'm really worried about the, the, the technology tonight. I was. Um, but yeah, we, we, we can do all of this. We've got them running scared. Let's keep them running scared. Let's capitalise on it. Let's get e-cigs treated properly the way they ought to be. It's vapour insurrection time. Go for it. Grand Theft Auto for e-cigs. That's us. It's what we are. Isn't it right? Yeah, I was just going to read that. That was my favourite line from chat, that this swap video is going to be bigger than Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> um, I, 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 I'm sworn to secrecy. I can't give anything away. But you're going to be thrilled. That's all I'm going to say. Um, as per usual, we give the last word to chat. Sav? I've been saving this one since the very beginning. It came from Mark Shaw. And it goes right the way back to when we were thinking of a new acronym for the ants. Oh, no. And Mark oh. Shaw says, I have an acronym for the ants. WHO. Oh, hang on. Hasn't that already been used? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> that was brilliant. Well done. Well done. Oh, I love Mark Shaw. Yes. I love that one. Hey, it's it's it has been yet again a pleasure to spend the last hour with you. I want to please put your hands to can't put your hands together. Big thanks in chat to Lorian from Ecker. Uh, for coming to join us tonight from her obviously very warm front room where it's been very warm. I hope it pisses down tomorrow. Um, and also to Sav for doing the job that she usually does. And I, I presume you've had Kat and the rest of the team in the background feeding you? Yes, I have. As ever. Our team yep. is superb. But as ever, um, the biggest thanks. I've got to go to you uh, for tuning in and watching and doing what you do to make sure ACs don't disappear up somebody's jacksie. As the who... The WHO, thanks for that, Mark, would like to happen. Um, my name's been Dave Dawn. Sometimes it's David Dawn. What the hell? It doesn't matter who I am. Um, thank you so much for tuning in and taking the time to join us tonight. Um, tomorrow night, the Here's Hour will be on. Keith will be here and we'll have a little bit of fun. And then you know what's happening the rest of the week. I'll fill you in again tomorrow. Until then, from all of us here, have a very, very good night. Vape on, vape hard and nil carborundum illegitimi. Good night, everybody. Good night.